Well, welcome back to the kitchen, and uh, I've got another vintage cassette deck in pieces. It's a uh, RT10 from Sharp, and uh, being made in 1980, will still be made in Japan at that point. None of the uh, PRC junk here. Now, you might think that this is a nicely made piece of kit, and so it is, to a very large degree. But there's one nasty little thing in there that they've done to make it conk out and be just about unfixable. Now, I'll turn the mechanics over so you can see where the tape usually goes. You'll see the take-up spool here. And this is driven by a rubber tyre wheel, which usually resides on this linkage there and is spring-loaded and the capstan and main bearing is here and I've had to clean this up because there was nothing wrong with the bearings at all but uh, the rubber wheel that does the take-up is driven by a very thin rubber tyre itself which is mounted on the capstan and spins in this groove so you've got the Phosphor bronze or sintered bronze bearing each end there, and then a little slot. Well, to cut a long story short, this little rubber sleeve on the capstan had done what Phillips cassette belts and idlers used to do in the 60s and early 70s, and it turned to goo. And the thing is an absolute pig to remove, as you can see, you've got to virtually dismantle the whole machine to get at it. Even taking the power button and the main transformer out and its shielding plate and all this sort of stuff. Why do I do all this, you may ask? Sometimes I ask myself that. Uh, this particular machine belongs to uh, Vintage Sales 14 James, who's been down here for the weekend from Yorkshire. Uh, about 300 miles he had to go when uh, he went earlier on, about five and uh, we've had uh, Vintage Sound 1992 Adam down here from uh, Ashford as well. And uh, his Vauxhall Corsa is still giving trouble. It's a three cylinder engine, I think they're only 998cc. Funny little thing, but uh, the cylinder head is cracked, or the block is cracked. And although it's all right for very short journeys, <laughs> well, I say all right, it's addicted to K-seal, uh, which uh, seals up uh, gaps in, well, <laughs> blown head gaskets and that sort of thing. I wouldn't want to go very far in it. But uh, James has got the newer version, so uh, hopefully he'll get back to Yorkshire all right. But as for this thing, it's going to be a bit of a swine to do for the simple reason that uh, I've got to work out a way of putting a rubber sleeve on that when the main bearing assembly there is around it. At least they did one thing right, they did make it so that you can unscrew this uh, main bearing assembly from the uh, chassis of the thing. It's not the only machine afflicted by this problem. Uh, apparently some realistic decks, part of the, the old Tandy chain, which we no longer have here in England, of course, and the UK, were also uh, afflicted with this problem. But I suppose it is eventually dimly possible to sort this out. Whereas the uh, contemporary Phillips decks were there orange wheel syndrome <laughs> that as somebody in Holland calls it going to a red Leicester cheese is not so easy those are especially where the gears are helical but with a bit of luck and the following wind um, we will have this uh, back to health in the not too distant future it had better be because I'll forget where all these bloody screws go <laughs> anyway see you soon